Every summer, the heart of the Great Lakes is witness to an extraordinary cultural phenomenon. A bold international musical event where the world's most celebrated artists gather to perform chamber music. Their passion and artistry move us to collectively experience the fullest range and depth of emotion with every crescendo, turn of the page and stroke of the bow. Chamber music at its best, fresh, dynamic, soul-stirring. The Great Lakes Chamber Music Festival, where great music comes to play. Welcome to the first evening performance of a five-day, nine-concert virtual Great Lakes Chamber Music Festival. I'm Paul Watkins, Artistic Director of the Festival. I hope you were able to join us this morning for our opening concert and discussion with the Callisto Quartet, one of four Schaus Institute ensembles that will be performing during this virtual festival. Schaus Institute director Philip Setzer and I look forward to hosting two performances each day through Saturday with one final concert on Sunday afternoon. Each concert in this virtual festival is brought to you at no charge, made possible by generous support from our sponsors, benefactors and audience members. It's our collective gift to the community. I hope you will enjoy the wonderful music with us over the next five days and consider making a gift to the Great Lakes Chamber Music Festival yourself by visiting our website at greatlakeschambermusic.org. Today, I'm pleased to present a program which I've called Visions and Revisions. These performances were recorded at Merkin Hall in New York City and feature violinist Tessa Lark, violist Tianxin Cindy Wu, pianist Shai Wozner, myself on the cello, and the Brentano String Quartet. The three concerts from Merkin Hall will each be preceded by a reading. As I was putting together the programmes, particular poems sprang to mind, and I asked my friend, the extraordinary British actor Samuel West, to read them for us. The first of these is an excerpt from T.S. Eliot's poem, The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock, a mysterious and multi-layered poem. In their own ways, each of the composers in this programme was a visionary, but also a revisionary, taking music from the past and making it new. Sio credesse che mia risposta fosse a persone che mai tornasse al mondo, questa fiamma staria senza più scosse. Ma perché c'è già mai di questo fondo non tuono vivo alcun? Siodo è vero, senza tema d'infamia, ti rispondo. Let us go then, you and I, when the evening is spread out against the sky like a patient etherized upon a table. Let us go through certain half-deserted streets, the muttering retreats of restless nights in one-night cheap hotels, and sawdust restaurants with oyster shells. Streets that follow like a tedious argument of insidious intent to lead you to an overwhelming question. Oh, do not ask, what is it? Let us go and make our visit. In the room, the women come and go, talking of Michelangelo. The yellow fog that rubs its back upon the window panes the yellow smoke that rubs its muzzle on the window panes. Licked its tongue into the corners of the evening, lingered upon the pools that stand in drains, let fall upon its back the soot that falls from chimneys, slipped by the terrace, made a sudden leap, and seeing that it was a soft October night, curled once about the house and fell asleep. 
And indeed there will be time for the yellow smoke that slides along the street, rubbing its back upon the window panes. There will be time. There will be time to prepare a face to meet the faces that you meet. There will be time to murder and create, and time for all the works and days of hands that lift and drop a question on your plate. Time for you and time for me. And time yet for a hundred indecisions and for a hundred visions and revisions before the taking of a toast and tea. Mm-hmm. 
variations you just heard were a sparkling and witty tribute to Beethoven's idol Handel. The composer of our next work, Henry Purcell, was admired in equal measure by Benjamin Britten and recognised as one of the Baroque era's most original voices. This fantasia is built quite literally upon one note, middle C on the piano in fact, sustained throughout by the second viola. It's followed by Lacrimae, an exquisite set of reverse variations by Britten based on themes by the Elizabethan composer John Dowland. The theme emerges only at the closing of the piece.
My chamber music teacher at the Yehudi Menuhin School of Music in the 1980s, the Austrian writer and musician Hans Keller, wrote, The piano quartet in G minor furnishes conclusive proof more than any other single masterpiece that Mozart's 
was the only truly omniscient ear of which we know. I agree.
Please join me again tomorrow for the programme Chen Kim Watkins Trio Plays Beethoven as I join my friends, the wonderful couple Gloria Chen and Suvin Kim. We also look forward to hosting you virtually for tomorrow morning's performance and discussion with Shouse Ensemble, the Rolston String Quartet at 11am Eastern Time. They'll be playing the third movement of Edvard Grieg's String Quartet No. 1 in G minor, Opus 27, the Intermezzo. <laughs>